All right, so next we're going to go over what's called the pelvic girdle and the bones that are made up of that. This is a fully assembled pelvic girdle and it has your os coxae and your sacrum. And now we're first going to take these out and we're going to go over one of the os coxae and all the structures that you have to know on it. So this is an os coxae which is made up of three fused bones. And the three bones on it are called your ilium, which is this most superior part right here. And then you have your ischium, which is this most posterior and inferior part right here. And then the pubis right here, which is anterior. Now we'll just start going over some structures on these bones that you have to know. The first structure is called the iliac crest, which is just this upper portion of the ilium, or the superior border. And the next structure is called the iliac fossa, which is just this depression right here in the ilium. Another structure you have to know is called the articular surface for the sacroiliac joint. And that's where your sacrum is going to articulate. And you can see that this is just a roughened surface right here where it's going to fuse together. And the next articular surface is called the pubic symphysis, which is right here. And that is where your other pubis is going to come and articulate with this one. This large notch right here is called the greater sciatic notch. And later on we'll learn that a nerve is going to go through there. Another structure you have to know is called the anterior superior iliac spine, which is this superior spine right here on the ilium. And then directly inferior to that is called the anterior inferior iliac spine, which is right here. The next structure you have to know is called your ischial tuberosity, which is this whole base structure right down here. And it's where things are just going to attach to. And then another spine you have to know is called your ischial spine. It's right here and it's just this bump that juts off the ischium right here. This large foramen or hole right here is called your obturator foramen. And later on we will learn that some veins, arteries, and nerves run through this to go down to the lower body. And then the last structure you have to know is called the acetabulum, which is this large depression right here, and it's where your femur articulates with the oscoxae. The next bone we're going to go through, or bones we're going to go through, are the sacrum and then the coccyx, which is just the tailbone. This is also part of the pelvic girdle. So some structures we have on the sacrum, this roughened surface right here is also called the articular surface for the sacroiliac joint, and it's going to articulate with the os coxae. The sacral canal is this large canal going straight in like this, and then the end of the sacral canal is called the sacral hiatus down here. We have sacral foramen, which are just the holes going through the fused vertebra right here. The median sacral crest, which is just the crest of the sacrum and it's right in the middle of it. And then this coccyx down here is fused vertebra and there's usually about four of them. And on the sacrum there are usually five fused vertebrae but that can vary from person to person. Okay so here we have a femur and we're just going to go over some general structures that we have to know. The first structure you have to know is the head, which is going to be on the most superior part of your femur, right here. And then on that head you have what's called your fovea capitis, which is where a ligament's going to attach. It's just a depression in the head of the femur. And then right inferior to the head you have what's called your neck, right here. The next structures we have are just some bumps or protrusions. The first one we have is the greater trochanter right here, and the greater one is more superior than the lesser trochanter, which is right here, and that's inferior. On the back of the femur, we have a structure, and it's called the linea aspera, which is right here, and there's going to be some muscles that attach to that. And then going down to the most distal or inferior part of the femur, we have some more structures. The first structure we're going to go over, you might not be able to see very well, but 
we'll go over it in lab more. And some people have larger ones or smaller ones, but it's called the adductor tubercle right here. And it's where your adductors are going to attach. The next structure we have are the epicondyles. And we know that this is medial because the head is facing medially. So I'm going to flip it over again. The medial epicondyle is going to be this part right here, or this region. And then the lateral epicondyle is going to be right here, this region. And then directly inferior to those, you have what are called your condyles. This is going to be your lateral condyle right here. And then this is going to be your medial condyle right here. And then going between those, you have what's called your intercondylar groove, which just separates those two condyles. The next bone we have is called the patella, and it's a very small bone, also known as your kneecap. And there's only a couple structures we have to know on it. We have the base, which is the more flat part right here, and that's actually superior. And then we have the apex, which is the pointy part, and that's inferior. And then on the posterior side of the patella, we have the articular surface, and it's really smooth. And to tell if the patella is a left or a right, you hold the apex pointing away from you, which is pointing away from me now. So I'll flip it around, so it's pointing away from you now. And then you set it down, and you let it fall, and whichever way it falls, that's which side it is. So you can see that you hold it like this, and you let it fall, and it falls to your right. So that means this is a right patella. Here is a tibia and fibula combo. Um, we will first start at the top, and we'll look at the tibia first. When we go to the tibia, um, you're going to look here, and you're going to see that this is the medial side of the tibia. So this will be the medial condyle, and then this will be the lateral condyle, lateral away, medial towards. Um, then we look on the top, and you'll see the intercondylar eminence. Uh, going down the tibia now, we'll go to a big bump on the front, and that'll be that uh, tibial tuberosity. When I work down from there, I'm going to be following the anterior margin of the tibia. That'll just be that anterior front part of the tibia. And then on the very bottom here, I'll have the medial malleolus, and that'll be that inner part of your ankle that you can feel. When I move to the fibula, uh, there's really only two structures you need to know on the fibula. That'll be the head of the fibula. And then if I move down, you'll have the lateral malleolus. You do not need to distinguish between left and right uh, fibula tibia, uh, but when you do put it together, um, you'll always have the fibula on the lateral side and the tibia on the medial side, kind of like this. Okay, so going from the tibia and the fibula down, our next bone is called the talus, which is your first tarsal right here. And then directly inferior to that, you have what's called your calcaneus, also known as your heel bone, which is this bone right here. And then your other tarsals are your navicular, which is on the medial part of your foot, your cuboid, which is on the lateral part of your foot, and then your three cuneiforms, your medial cuneiform, your intermediate cuneiform, and then your lateral cuneiform. And then going down from that, you have your metatarsals, one, two, three, four, and five. And you always start medially with your big toe, and you go laterally. And then on your big toe, you have only two phalanxes, or phalanges, your proximal and your distal. And then if you go to one of your other toes, we'll just say our second one, you have a proximal phalange, a middle phalange, and then a distal phalange.